if this is an introduction to ratio and proportions, the beginning of Unit 7. In Unit 7, we're going to be studying a basic concept called polarity. In the past, we have studied congruency. Congruency would be shapes, which are the same shape and same size. For this unit, we're going to be studying shapes which have the same shape different size. We call that similarity. Same shape, same size, congruency. These triangles are similar. But a key component of similarity is learning to deal with ratios and proportions. Cleaning solutions. Difference. Speaking. Lego diagrams. Every single one of these, from cleaning solutions to art, blueprint baking, and building Legos, all involve something called the use of ratios. And that is what we're studying today. Ratio of one number to another is a quotient when the first number is divided by the second. Another phrase for ratio is that a ratio is a comparison of two numbers by division. A comparison of two numbers by division. You need to be familiar with several forms of ratio. Ratios. One is using words, eight to the twelve. Another one is using fractions. Another one is using the colon. Eight to twelve reduces two to three, which Another way to say it is two colon three, and I will add four is decimal because two over three is approximately zero point six 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 repeating. You need to understand that all decimals and all fractions are inherently all decimals and all fractions are inherently ratio. Ratio, you always want to get the lowest form. So if you can compare a ratio of OI, I like to get the OI to GD. Notice the order there OI to GD. You want to do this in fraction form, that means OI with the box, and then put 14. Over ZD to be second since it's the one that's twenty six two. Ratios you always want to take the lowest form. We know both of these are divisible by two. So the final form of this ratio would be seven over three B. So I'll provide it like this: seven T three B, seven T. 3B, etc. Those are all ratios of OI to ZD. Let's try another one. It says find the ratio of the measure of the smallest angle. Be careful of that word 2. 2 ends up being the colon or the fraction bar. 2D 
the largest angle. The ratio of the smallest angle to the largest angle. Now, the problem is you don't even have all the angles. So it's important that you find all the angles before you complete the center. So we can add one, all of these, have to add it to 360. So that's going to be 130 plus 120, 250, away from 360. Now that's there. And we want the ratio of the smallest angle. So you find the smallest angle, which is 60. To the largest angle is 120. Smallest to largest. Ratio by definition is always simplified to the lowest form. That is a 1 to 2 ratio of the smallest to the largest. Ratios can be used to compare two numbers in the same unit. It's very, very critical that you get in the same unit before you do any comparisons of ratios. Let me give you an example here. A ratio that's in different units is called a rate. So we're given a rate here that this poster is one meter long one meter long by 52 centimeters wide. Now, this is called a rate. Why is it called a rate? Because we have a discrepancy in units. If I want a ratio, ratio by the essential definition is a comparison within the same unit. So watch very carefully. If I were to write this as a ratio like this, 1 to 52, why don't you write that down just for good measure? Now cross it out. That would be incorrect. I cannot say my ratio is 1 to 52 because we're not in the same unit. So the first thing I need to do is get in the same unit. I'm going to start by first getting into centimeters. One meter is 100 centimeters. I expect you to know that conversion in the first dimension. So if I'm going to go watch from width to length. Notice the order there. That's important that you follow the order that's being requested. Width to length. My width is 52 centimeters and my length is 100 centimeters. Now that I'm in the same unit, I can disregard units because ratios do not have units attached to them. There's simply a comparison. So I'm going to divide by two. And I can divide by two again. And when you can no longer reduce, that is your ratio. So in using centimeters, our ratio, that's a ratio, a comparison of numbers in the same unit completely reduced is 13 to 25. Another way you can write that would be the ratio of the width to the length is 13 to 25. Using meters, you would take this and translate this into meters. So 52 centimeters is 0 0.52 meters. 
So again, 0 0.52 meters compared to 1 meter. You would divide this up, it would be the same ratio. 13 to 25. So the recap here, really important, the two rate is used for a comparison within different units. Ratios is a comparison when you're dealing with the same unit. You can have what's called extended ratios where you have, you're used to seeing one set for another set. You can use extended ratios for greater. For example, if I have a triangle, I have a triangle, something and two of something and five of something. You translate this into a formula, formula. So we have two x plus two x plus five x. And because we know it's a triangle, adds up to 180. Super important, you don't just start by Finding that unknown, we're going to plug it in. Therefore, in this case, of course, my triangle, 2 times 20 is a 40 to 40 to 100 degrees. Those are the actual answers. What's really nice about these is when you have an answer, you can always reduce it. So we're going to take 40, 40, and 100. One, I know it all adds up to an A, but if I'm not correct, you know, I'm going to divide everything by 20. And I get the 2 to 2 to 5 ratio. Now, quick definition in the margin. A ratio is a comparison to numbers by defining that right there. Number something is When you have an equation of ratio, this whole thing is called a proportion. So this whole thing here, an equation of ratio is called a proportion. So when a proportion is an equation stating two ratios are equal. Different ways of doing it now. Whatever B is equal to C. Or you can use terms. Take a look how this works. Two B equals C to C. Using words, A to B is C to B. And same thing with any proportion. You can use this like an extended ratio. Use it for multiple situations. But 
there's a couple properties of proportions that you need to be familiar with. Now, don't let your eyeballs get overwhelmed. If you color code this, this is a lot easier. So if we have a proportion, And we have a proportion which is A to B and C to D. There's variations of this that work. The first variation that's most common is the cross multiplication variation. A to D, A times B equals C times B. That's what you guys know as cross multiplication. That's one variation. Another one says this that you could go straight across like this, and you end up. A over C, D over D. That's another way of looking at it. Then, of course, the inverse is perfectly acceptable, where you simply flip them. So the inverse is another way you can look at it. Let's call this the across product. And, of course, this is the inverse. And then we have what are called addition identities. If I say A plus B over B, notice I simply add the same thing from the bottom to the top. So if I'm over B, I can add B here. If I'm over D, I can add D there. And that's called an addition identity. So these are variations of the same proportion that you need to be familiar with. Taking a look up here, then of course you have your extended versions. That is A over B equals C over D equals B over F. Then you can simply add everything up and pick your own proportion, etc. Now Knowing these variations right here, these four variations, taking a look at what you have here, this is your starting proportion right here. You use that as your starting proportion, and I'd like you to complete what would be the logical conclusion to each of these. The answers to these are on the board. They are not in this video. Fill out those four and check on the board to see if you're correct.